Welcome. In this video, together with the next two, um, I will discuss a result about differentiability of Lipschitz maps. When we have a map, uh, a Lipschitz map between Euclidean spaces, then at almost every point, the map is differentiable. This is a result that is uh, classical from the first half of the 1900s. Um, and it's called the uh, Rademacher's theorem, uh, since it is due to Hans Rademacher, a German mathematician. Pierre Panzou, uh, a French mathematician, in uh, 1989, extended this result to Lipschitz maps between Carnot groups. Let's see what uh, the Panzou's version of Rademacher theorem is. Okay, we want to discuss the differentiability almost everywhere of uh, Lipschitz maps between uh, Carnot groups. So let's remember what is a Carnot group. Um, G Carnot group. So G is going to be a simply connected group, simply connected, and actually even important, important. Group that has this property that um, there is a, a subspace of its Lie algebra. Uh, let's call it V1, we call it the first stratum uh, that is bracket generating. And has the property that uh, for every uh, real number lambda, there exists, there exists a map, let's call it delta lambda, from G to G, that is a group homomorphism, and has the property that uh, this map, the, the differential of the map, when it's restricted to V1, then it's exactly the, uh, the multiplication by lambda, on the subspace V1. This map extends, and this is because uh, the, the Lie algebra has a stratification with the first layer V1. And when we have a kernel group, then we can see it as a metric space. So G is also equipped with a Carnot Karateodori distance. distance uh, induced uh, by from a left invariant structure huh? induced by a left invariant subrimanent structure uh, on v1 huh? so in, in, in other words we have to uh, fix a norm, so we choose if we fix it a norm on v1, and then we will have an induced uh, left invariant uh, norm, and therefore a, a subliminal structure. Hmm? All right. So the exam the maps that we want to study are the Lipschitz maps. Let me just recall just for completeness what's what's a, what's a Lipschitz map. So let's suppose you have a two metric spaces, and and here you have a map from x to y. We said this map is Lipschitz. Uh, and this means, um, being Lipschitz means that there exists some constant L, some L, such that for all points, x, x prime, x prime, uh, we have the, the, the distance between f of x and f of x prime is less or equal than L times the distance between x and x prime. Okay, so let's 
understand uh, what are the, what is this uh, structure of on a, on a kernel group that uh, this this metric structure that we have. So, and I, I would like to really tell you that if we, if one wants to consider Lipschitz maps, then it's not really important which two norms which norm we we consider so we consider on the kernel group, namely. Suppose you have two norms, two norms on the first stratum V1 of a kernel group. It's called the kernel group G. Hmm? Then the identity map from G to G, now seeing the first with the distance associated to the first norm and then the distance associated to the second norm, this map is Lipschitz. And of course, also the inverse. So with, in, with in, um, Lipschitz inverse. One says the map is by Lipschitz. Hmm? Where so D is the uh, Carnot -Car Carateodori distance associated to V1 in the first norm. And the first norm. And D prime is the CC distance associated to V1 and the second norm. Hmm? And this is just because on V1, which is a finite dimensional vector space, all norms are equivalent up, up to a multiplicative constant. They, are, they, are, um, they can be bounded from below and above by the multiplicative constant. And therefore, it's, this is as a consequence, the map is, is by Lipschitz, okay? Which means that the Lipschitz map from into G uh, with respect to this, this distance or distance, these are the same, okay? All right. So let's now discuss the theorem that we want to generalize on Carnot groups. I will just recall for you uh, Rademacher theorem. theorem. Okay, suppose we have a map from Rn to Rm that is Lipschitz. And with this, I mean, with, with the standard Euclidean distance with respect to Euclidean distance. Hmm? Then Rademacher tells you that there exists a full measure set, let's call it E in Rn, on the domain, such that for all points in this set, the map F is differentiable at P. This is the statement of the Rademacher theorem. Okay, some, uh, some comments. So full measure here means with respect to uh, the Lebesgue measure. Now, what does differentiable means? Okay, differentiable means that just that there exists the differential at p. Hmm? What, what 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 does this mean? This means that um, there exists a linear map, which then we call it uh, the differential linear map called. Um, D F sub P, which is a map from R N to R M. See, same domain and target, such that um, the map near P. So, if I take an increment, let's call it uh, H. Hmm, then this is the map at P plus the differential. The linear part applied 
to h plus some error which is a little o of h this is h goes to zero namely when h goes to zero here there is a you can write put a function that goes to zero also divided by h in other words if i take this and i remove this and i divide by h this is going to zero this is the, the, the statement of being differentiable with this map as differential. Okay. Once you know that the map is differentiable, how can you construct this differential map? Right. So let, let me let me re, re, restate this. Okay. So how to construct the, the differential DFB? So let's fix for a moment the value h, right? We want to find the, um, the, the, the map, the differential. Let me rewrite what I wrote before, but remember h is a vector, right? So let's write it as fixed vector plus a scalar constant. Let's write it as th. So now, uh, so t is a vector in Rn, and t is a positive mm, real number. Mm. So the formula that I wrote before becomes fp plus the map is linear, so it's df p at h plus little o of t h. Mm. Right? So now let's reorganize. We have f p plus t h minus f of p. If I divide by t, then I get dfph plus little o of th h divided by t. And this is exactly this last term goes to zero. So what we have that this converge exactly to df at p of h. So in other words, this value is the limit when t goes to zero of this, we call it difference quotient. Hmm? Let's, let's uh, rephrase again and have an, a slightly different viewpoint. Another viewpoint. Consider t as a para parameter, as a parameter. And then, of course, we'll then uh, then send it to to zero. Hmm? It's a positive parameter. And what you do, you consider the map this 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 map here as a map in H. Hmm? So this is the map H going to. I will just rewrite what's written here. I write one over t that multiplies. Um, I will reorganize a little bit. I will put minus f of p first. Uh, then I will write plus f p plus t h. Hmm? Should I get? I mean, this is exactly the same thing as this. Hmm? All right. Now, so what we have is that these maps. Uh, if you want to give a name, but let's say f p t is the definition, right? So we have that f p t converge to the differential at p hmm? as t equals to zero. Now let's let's look better at this map here. I will write this map in the following way. So this is a map of with variable h, hmm? and what do I do to h? So I take h and then I dilate it by t. So let me write this a dilation by t of h. After this, I add p. Let me translate by p. So since eventually we will have a group that is not commutative, let me choose the left translation because all the geometry on kind of groups is left in value. So I will left translate by p. 
Then I apply F. Then I translate by what? By this value here, inverse. So what do I do? I left translate by, or I take the, the inverse left translation of f of p, hmm? which is the same of left translating by the inverse of f of p. Hmm? And after this, what do I have? What I have? I have a dilation by one over t. Dilation of one over t. So we are considering the map H going to these compositions of maps. Right? Okay. So with this idea in mind, let's give a name to this map here, which now you see it makes sense to every group on which we can left translate so in any group. And we also have dilations like a kernel group. Okay. So here are the definitions. So let F from G1 to G2, just a map, a map between, between kernel groups. Okay. Um, let's de define the difference quotient for any t, for any point p uh, in g. Uh, the difference quotient Uh, I don't know which one should be the terminology, but uh, at p uh, uh, with the parameter t is the map that I wrote before. So of course it makes sense if I write it from backwards. So I dilate, then I left translate by p, then I apply f, then I um, left translate by the inverse of f of p, and then I, I dilate again. Now, in analogy with the differential in uh, Euclidean calculus, we define the intrinsic differential, also called Pansu differential, Pansu intrinsic differential, of f at p is the map, the f, I'll try to use the capital D to distinguish from the, the usual differential with the use the small d, is the limit as, the, as t goes to zero of the difference quotients, delta one over t compose L F P inverse, compose F compose L P compose delta T. Where this limit is as maps, uh, and is meant to be a limit that is uniform on compact sets, where the limit is uniform on compact sets. Hmm? Okay. Um, of course, this limit might not exist if, if, if uh, for some maps. But we will say that F is uh, Pansu differentiable or intrinsically differentiable, differentiable at uh, P if, okay, if this, dif this intrinsic differential exists and one more property, it is a group morphism, homomorphism. Hmm? Remember that this, the, the, the map will be a map between kernel groups. Hmm? Okay, 
a little bit of observation about uh, this definition of differential, okay? Let me copy the, the, the definition of differential and we discuss a little bit more. Mm -hmm. so, so we have this map. Mm -hmm. So this is the definition of the differential. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first observation, okay. This map here, it, so what we want to study is the map at P or in a neighborhood of P. And left translating before and after the map F, this just makes, translate the map in such a way that we will study the map at zero, to at the identity and going to the identity. This is because I mean, we're thinking the dilations as maps that are dilating the identity elements, okay? So I will just say that th this, um, this operation, this is a canonical uh, transformation to send the identity of G1 to the identity of G2 via the uh, via, via the behavior of F, via F, yeah? of F at P. Hmm? And in other words, we have P, we have F of P, we have the map F, and now what we do, we just you know, reparameterized sending one by left translation, and then uh, here is the left translation by, sorry, is the left translation by P and the left translation by F of P. One, G two. Mm -hmm. So this new map would be G. And, and then of this map G, we are dilating before and after, which is exactly what, what one does when, when, when you do a, the zooming, when defining the derivative in, uh, in, in calculus. This is a, a zooming of G at one. Mm -hmm. And why, again, why we are choosing left translations? Because since the Carnot group is homogeneous, it is, uh, as, as a geometry, is left invariant. And for example, if F is Lipschitz, then since these are isometries, then this, the, the, the new map, the translated map, is still Lipschitz with exactly the same constants. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's write again the definition of the intrinsic differential. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a map from G1 to G2, the two current groups. So when you apply at the point H, so H is an element of G1 and DFP goes from G1 to G2. Mm -hmm. Then um, we say that um, so D, F, P, H is, should be seen as the partial intrinsic derivative of F at P um, along H. So is the, is the derivative in the direction of h. I want you not to. Um, I want to note a few things. So, um, let's assume for a moment that this derivative in the direction of h exists. Hmm? So, if this exists, then for all delta, for for all lambda, the partial derivative in the direction of delta lambda h, then it's easy to see that just plugging here delta h, then changing the parameter t, then it's easy to see that this is really delta 
lambda of the partial derivative of h. Okay, so therefore, if if this exists, then really also this exists, and this formula holds. Hmm? So, which means that if this differential, intrinsic differential, exists, then it behaves well with the dilations. Okay, so it's homogeneous. So, if dfp exists, then it is homogeneous with respect to the dilations. So, but remember, instead it is a, a requirement that the, uh, to have the differentiability at a point, that this differential exists and is a group homomorphism. It's like when, uh, when you do calculus on uh, maps between R and N, and not only the derivative, the differential should exist, should also be a linear map. Right? Instead, now linear is, um, is replaced between being a group homomorphism. Okay, so we are ready to now uh, state the Pansu's theorem. So this is Pansu's, Pansu's generalization of Rademacher theorem. Suppose you have a map G1 from G1 to G2 uh, Lipschitz uh, between Carnot groups. Then there exists a full measure, full measure set E such that for all P in E, F is intrinsically differentiable at P. Okay. Okay, some uh, clarification again. So full measure, Full measure, this means with respect to the hard measure on, on the group uh, G1. Hmm? But equivalently, this means with respect to the house of Q measure with Q equal the sum of dj of j dimension of vj. As we saw that this uh, house of measure is um, is a hard measure in a previous video. Mm -hmm. And um, okay, this is a terminology from from measure theory that um, when something holds for for a full measure set, then we say that um, um, that this holds almost everywhere. We say for almost every a e means almost every uh, p, f is uh, intrinsically differentiable. Differentiable. We might also say that f is intrinsically differentiable almost everywhere. The strategy to prove uh, Pansu's version of Rademacher theorem it's in, in three parts. So the first part, uh, we will prove it for curves, for Lipschitz curves. So from R or from an interval into a Carnot group G. Uh, second, we will prove it that if we have um, differentiability in two directions, then we also have in the product of the directions. Um, so differentiability in two directions implies differentiability on uh, the 
product of the two directions uh, uh, along along the, the product. Uh, yeah, maybe I should put along the direction along two directions imply differentiability along the product of the two directions. And then we will just put these two facts together because um, uh, we conclude uh, since uh, we have um, we have the exponential of v1 inside uh, g, right? And so what, what, what do we have? We have, we have this, uh, this exponential v1 and which is uh, a union of curves, okay? Of, of, of lines, right? So now if we restrict now a map f value to some other kernel group, then restricted to every line because of the first point we will have differentiability. And as soon as you take two lines, okay, then because of the second point you will have in the product of, in the group generated by the product of these two lines. And, and doing it on from a basis of V1, you will have it for the whole group, okay? Now, in the next video, we will discuss the case of curves. If you like the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button. This will also suggest the course to other people. If you want to see more videos on Sabriman and Geometry, please subscribe to the channel. Click in below. Bye.